and welcome to the second episode of To Be Honest, a show with a clown, a nerd, a duck, and a degenerate. Hi. I'm Colossal is Crazy, and today we're talking about, well, I don't really know what we're talking about. What are we talking about? Yeah, Should we no get the idea. Nikocado Avocado thing out of the way? Yeah. Whose last name is like a healthy food, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> he should change his name to like Nick. Man, <laughs> you can't. I, you really you did take that not. thirty second rule literally. Like, goddamn. Nikocado avocado. Should I just read this? You gotta mm -hmm. say the name of the subreddit. You gotta say the name of the subreddit, please. Reddit Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> Using the power of the internet to solve real-world problems. <laughs> I don't know why people think this is so funny. Because, like, law enforcement will pretty frequently ask the public, like, hey, we're at a loss for this. Like, do you have any tips? And this is basically, like, investigation that's happening amongst a bunch of volunteer people trying to, op like, crack cold cases and track down missing people. Like, what's funny about it? It, it, is, it is a good thing. But also, like, I'm actually amazed that the subreddit, like, the SNU doesn't have a fedora on. It, it kind of looks like a yarmulke. It's a yarmulke? What is that? It's a yarmulke. <laughs> I, I thought it was a beret. Oh, okay. I thought it was a beret. So what, what, the, what the fuck is it wearing on its head? Beret. It, it's a yarmulke. It's an alien. It's a Jewish alien, I think. Nikocado Avocado video captures the audio of a woman screaming in what is said to have been a stabbing. Is there any way to verify this? The infamous YouTube mukbang star, Nikocado Avocado, made a video yesterday in which him and his husband eat Burger King. <laughs> At the 34 minute mark, you can clearly hear what sounds like a woman screaming in terror. Neither Nikocado or his husband appear to notice, as the audio is coming from the background. Nikocado released an Instagram story in which he explains that the scream was caused by a brackets fatal stabbing that happened in his building. He appears very genuine in the response, brackets, I know, it's the clickbait king, but somehow I think this might be valid, and expresses concern and condolences. He is very clickbaity, for sure, that's his game, but this isn't usually how he goes about it. I have been trying to figure out if this A actually happened, and B, if the woman is okay or not. And nothing's turned up on them. Our final video together, Mukbang, is the title of the video. At the 34 minute mark, you can hear a scream and then you Why can Why was hear it called my final video, by the way? He's clickbaiting uh, him and his partner not uh, working together anymore, but he's done that a few times. Every single video is literally like, my health is declining, I have to stop. And then it's been like that for like a year. But there's like a three step routine for every video. It's like boyfriend throws a chicken nugget at him, he cries and then he eats. Uh, it's not even exaggeration. I think it's just cause he knows people like watching the meltdown. So he like plays into it. Yeah, if he had like a whole like, you know, I don't know, like a whole container like thrown at him or something, or, or like noodles with all the sauce, you know, something that's like, oh, this is going to stay in my clothes. But no, it'd literally be a chicken nugget and then just has a complete mental breakdown. I hate this entire story. It's a perfect like encapsulation of American decline and dystopian culture is you've got a guy who's social eating and stuffing his face doing a mukbang, someone screams, and he literally belches over top of it. So he doesn't do anything, he doesn't call the police, he doesn't seem to even notice, although you see his eyes kind of roll back. Like, what's that sound? Wait, what, what did you say? He rolled his eyes, like, when he heard the woman? He kind of looks up, like, what's that sound? But he also might have just been listening to the echo of his belch, I can't tell. It's been two weeks, so I figured someone would have already done the research and figured out whether someone actually got killed, and there's nothing, so... No one's confirmed whether there actually was a, a murder. But just because someone screams, it doesn't necessarily mean they're getting murdered, right? It doesn't even mean the audio is real. I mean, like, he's a pretty good, he's pretty good at self-promoting through negative publicity. So he could have just added a stock scream noise and then started a rumor that, oh, there was a murder. And this just shows how disconnected and, and self-absorbed Nikado Avocado is. There's been all these videos made by including the one we're making right now where people just want to comment on it and go, huh, look at that. Isn't that fucking pathetic? But then no one really knows whether something terrible happened or not. I saw like someone do like a video explaining their theory on him and they reckon like the only reason he's doing it is because he has like a sugar daddy or something or it's like a kink for him. Everything is related to kink. I think he's trapped. He's trapped uh, by the algorithm. He's a hostage of his own viral videos. He started down this path when he was somewhat healthy and those were the ones that banged no pun intended, and so he just kept doing it.
I think he just makes money off people that somehow get off on watching him be a slob. I swear he's so in deep now that, like, I see those videos and I almost think he's doing, like, an, an additional layer of irony. Like, it's another character. There's a way out of it, though. Like, look at what Shane Dawson does. Shane Dawson is kind of the template for being able to pivot. When Shane Dawson started doing the uh, documentaries that really took off, he had this strangely conspiratorial editing to it where you heard like very spooky music and boom, boom, everything was like very dramatic. And people were like, why is it edited like this? Like everything's a secret being revealed. If you understand the context of all the videos he'd uploaded before that, he was doing conspiracy videos. So what he was trying to do was keep the people who are into conspiracies and secret worlds, he was trying to keep them interested while also pivoting to something new. So you can do it. You just have to kind of slowly meld you know, your old content to your new content. So Nikado Avocado could do a, like vlogs or some other type of content that starts with him eating, but he does something else. And then when that does well, he just, does, you know, moves on. I, I, I wonder about him, whether he wants to keep doing this or whether it's just the only way to pay his bills in his mind. If you watch his investigations now, Shane Dawson, in retrospect, it is like a paranormal activity fan movie or something. Yeah, no, it seemed like something that would be on like the History Channel at like 11 at night. Did you guys watch his most recent documentary, his newest conspiracy video, Shane Dawson's? I thought he quit. Nah, he quit for a good long time. And then I think he slowly came, he was testing the waters with like Instagram. And then he kind of realized, wait, people kind of just moved on. I'm not going to get lynched anymore. In this video, there's two topics he talks about and he alternates back and forth between the two of them. The first thing, simulation theory. And the second thing is remote, remote viewing. viewing. I, I just imagine like a security camera or something. What? There was a CIA program that was uh, active for like 10, 15 years where essentially like psychics would visualize an area that they couldn't otherwise surveil. Hi. So for example, if I were to close my eyes and concentrate and try to think about what you were doing, taking your pants off and you're watching cartoons and you're DMing someone and trying to get them to draw Sonic Chungus farting in your mouth. I think I'd call that an educated guess. Hi. <laughs> okay, so I'm remote viewing in Colossal's living room right now. He is old, he smokes, and he runs. I now know everything about him. That's incredible, Niall. That's incredible. I'm looking into Pyrocynical's room right now and I'm seeing a five-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that can't go in, you piece of shit. <laughs> okay, apparently someone got stabbed in my building. And in my video, the evidence was there at the 34 mark. I honestly don't, I don't even know what to make of this. I'm kind of like, wow. Also, I am not making light of this. I feel horribly that this even happened. No one deserves this. No matter what someone does to you or makes you feel a certain way, you have no right to take a life. So, condolences. I think it resulted in some laws being changed, but there was a famous case of a, a woman who was... Uh like brutally raped and murdered in an alleyway and something like a hundred people heard it happen and no one called the police because everyone assumed someone else was doing it. Oh, uh, the bystander effect? Yeah. This is kind of reminding me of that where everyone is commenting on the fact that, wow, it sounds like somebody got murdered and no one's actually figuring out whether she got kidnapped, whether maybe she's still a hostage. I mean, there's reason, there's reason to go verify that someone who's screaming for their life is okay or dead no I, I, don't, I don't know if i agree with that because i hear screaming all the time and before jay or pyro mentions this no it's not because of the kids in the basement what I, got in there, I had to get in there beforehand no i just hear screaming all the time it could be anyone like do i go and check to help no it's just like could be for any reason some people get really drunk and then they just scream randomly and that's when you go over there and in your case in your in your nightgown and clown slippers and you go what's going on do you need any help no and i don't no i don't i'm just like fucking hell close the window it's a bit loud i'm trying to sleep <laughs> when things go to shit you count on your neighbors to come help you that's why you should introduce yourself when you move into a neighborhood and you go you go hey you know like i i live next door if you ever need any help i don't know anyone who does this i, yeah. I don't know does this make me a sociopath i'm not checking on that shit if you're experiencing a home invasion and you're, you know, let's say you're tied up to a chair and you're screaming, help, and your neighbors don't do anything, you've got bad neighbors. I, I feel like there are too many variables. There are too many reasons why they could be screaming help. If you, if you hear like an actual knife stab or something or a gunshot, then yeah. It's your responsibility then, Oliver. Okay, a gunshot, maybe. How the fuck am I going to hear a knife stab through a wall? <laughs> 
You're out of your fucking mind. In the story of the boy who cried wolf. It's a good story. Well, no one came over because we didn't know if he was... Well, there are too many variables. Everyone investigated it and did it over and over and to the point where they learned he was lying. Yeah, because people cry wolf all the time. This is the moral of the story. They do it too often. So... Why would I come running if I hear someone screaming? I think you're both right. I don't think I wouldn't help, but... If I saw it, if I... Okay, I'll say this. If I saw it with my own eyes and I saw some bloke stabbing his wife in the face, I would try and help. I mean, by that point, it'd probably be too late. But you, you would have seen it. If you did remote viewing, you would have seen it, but, you know. Yeah, if I was remote viewing and I saw it, I would rush next door to help. <laughs> you just look like an absolute <laughs> schizo running in. I saw a stabbing in my mind. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> <laughs> I saw a stabbing in my mind. It's like actual Silent Hill cutscene. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my fucking leg locked up, man. I got a cramp in my foot. It was just tense when I was laughing. Oh fuck. Okay, I'll tell you why. I wouldn't automatically assume someone was calling for help. And Nerd can back me up on this because he was there at the time. I was making this kind of noise. We, we were talking about the dark crystal. Yeah. And Colossal started to do the voice of the... The Chancellor Skeksy. Yeah. Please help me, Gelfling. I like shit like that. But we were saying child a lot. It was like, please, child. So it sounded like a like a handicapped old woman that had fallen out of her chair and was like begging a toddler to help her. But I was doing it outside on the balcony pretty loud. And I guess someone wasn't a sociopath because they thought that there was an old man or was it a woman they thought down the that stairs. was screaming for help. Yeah. So they called the police to do like a welfare check. <laughs> Because they thought I was yeah. a battered old woman being beaten alive by a child. We're sending help immediately, Mrs. Fletcher. It was the strangest call because they like they were embarrassed to ask. They were like, look, we respect your privacy and we're trying not to invade on your privacy. But is everybody OK over there? No. <laughs> so it was like they thought maybe that it was like a fetish thing because it went on for a while and then me and nikki cackling at the top of our lungs as you beg you know so like it was like it sounded like a really sadistic family did they think they were children beating an old lady a senile victimized elder abuse skexy please oh please <laughs> don't yeah. hurt me <laughs> do you see what i mean though that's why i wouldn't call for help or go and check on them Right, because it could just be some weird freak like myself. Some guy outside in an orange raincoat. I mean, if I heard you screaming for help like that, going, please, I'd be like, okay, that person's from like the 1800s, so yeah, I'm not going to go. <laughs> Yesterday, the president came out and said, uh, yeah, we're going to have food shortages and they're going to be real. Why? Because of Nikocado Avocado? I monitor sort of fringe corners of the news and they've been saying for a year that the supply chains are so disrupted that we have got famines coming. They're unavoidable. The natural gas used to make fertilizer, there wasn't going to be enough of it. And Russia had cut exports. And there was this all happened before Ukraine. So Russia is the number one wheat producer in the world. Ukraine is number five. So it's five times as expensive to buy basic ammonia fertilizer today than it was a few weeks ago. Famine is a real risk. And we already have about 800 million people on Earth that are subsisting on below 1,200 calories a day. About 15% of the world's calories come from wheat. About a third of that wheat comes from Russia, Ukraine. Russia has banned export of wheat. The wheat spring planting season is like now, this week, and there's not a lot of planting going on. Not only is the current wheat supply in Russia, Ukraine blocked up, but the future planting season is now significantly at risk. And again, that's 15% of global calories. It is gonna be a humanitarian disaster within a year. The man whose job it is to tell everybody everything's gonna be okay and we're gonna fix the problem is telling people, uh, yeah, everything's gonna get way more expensive and we're gonna be short on food. I don't know why everybody isn't very alarmed by that. It is something that has been predicted and then these exacerbating factors are compounding what's gonna happen. It seems like Africa is gonna be in a real jam. Is it a jam if it's only, it's not food in general, but it's just some food like wheat? Wheat is easy to grow, so you can flip like um, fruit crops into wheat fields. You can uh, repair that problem in some countries. I imagine that's going to start happening, but it's not instantaneous. It was, it's just fucking wheat. 
I mean, just eat something else. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know anything about the subject, no so maybe shit. I'm just talking way out of my fucking ass here. You just, maybe. You don't even cook. What we'll be short of, what we'll be missing, flour, crumpets for you, Colossal. I don't fucking eat that shit. Noodles, cake, pastries, cereal bars. Tacos are made with maize, which is corn, right? So I'm good. Again, I don't know anything about this subject, so maybe I'm talking <laughs> out of my ass. But why the fuck, why the fuck don't they just substitute different foods? You're not going to fucking starve. Just don't have so much bread. Oh, what? You can't have your Big Mac today because I'm sorry, we don't have the wheat for the fucking buns. <laughs> we just, just, just don't eat fucking Burger King today. Have something else that's that hasn't got wheat in it. Have a fucking apple. Uh, Oliver, you're actually right. You should go bring that up to like the United Nations. I don't think third world countries are ordering <laughs> Big Mac. <laughs> Such a fucking moron. We're talking about yeah, but there's other shit. There's surely, surely there's other shit. I'm not saying they have to go out into the field and start grazing the grass like a cow, but I mean, <laughs> there, is, there surely is fucking something else. There's other food sources other than fucking wheat. It's one of those things that's like a domino effect where when you remove wheat, you're affecting how expensive a steak is. If you're getting rid of the fertilizer, you're taking out fertilizer, then the apple that you suggested, you know, there might not be as many apples. Just order reeds, guys. What's the problem? It's so what Nerd said, though, that there's a domino effect that goes onto the agriculture and the cows and then the meat and then your protein goes up. Like, this fucking Big Mac obsession, like, remove Big Mac <laughs> world peace. Like, where is this coming from? What is your diet, by the way? Cigarettes. If you, if, okay, if you had to cook for yourself for a week, what would your diet be? What can you actually cook? Burnt shit. He starves. I've seen it. When Nikki uh, was cooking meals for us every day, she left town to go work on a movie for a while and uh, no one was making food anymore. And Colossal just didn't eat. He didn't eat. So like three days later, I think he- No, I did. I did. You ate the dog food. I did? You ate the dog's food. So he ate like rice and chicken that we'd cooked up for the dog. Oh, right. Well, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> You feed your dogs like fucking kings anyway. The dogs were eating better than us most of the time. Yeah, well. It was ridiculous. He buys like filet steak for the fucking dog. It was, uh. And mixes it with rice and butter. If you feed dogs like typical dog food from the store, it's just like crude protein. It's worse than hot dogs. It's just like, you know. Yeah, but it's a dog. It's a fucking. <laughs> they eat their own shit. Yeah, but no, they eat their own fucking shit. They don't care. You're right that they don't have a discerning taste, but if you worry about their nutrition and them living long, you don't give them poison. Yeah, but you don't think you need filet steak, mate. Sure. Could have done with a Big Mac. That you could have done with, like, a cheaper piece. Hey, look, they're your dogs. If you want to feed them fucking caviar, you could feed them caviar. So Colossal's giving a speech to the UN here. He's standing in front of the UN, and he's going, like, let them eat apples, basically. He's, it's the Marie Antoinette sort of thing. I mean, his cope is literally like, yeah, I don't want to eat bread anymore, so you guys will be all right. Yeah, but you don't need it to survive. I'm trying to think the last time I had bread. It's bread, dude. It's, it's bread. It's like the basic. I mean, you've heard of bread lines, right? You know, uh, like Oliver, I hate to say, but a, a, a taco is also made from the same thing. You, I mean, you can make it with flour, but you can also make it with maize. Most people do. And, and that's corn. That's fucking corn. Say there was corn shortage and corn was going out of fashion. What would you eat instead? Bread. <laughs> <laughs> <There's no fucking> <laughs> <bread>. <laughs> you, you trip yourself. Colossal's gonna be the first person marched up to the guillotine. If, when they bring guillotines back out, and there's like you know, this Nick wouldn't fit on it. Food insecurity <laughs> and riots and and cultural wars, and they're they're executing the aristocracy. This clown that told everybody, <laughs> if you can't afford bread, then just yeah. eat fresh fruit, eat an apple. Like that guy's head is getting lopped right off. When that woman was allegedly being murdered and you see Nick Ricardo just like not caring. Oliver would have not cared as well, but also thought, oh, she probably eats bread by the sound of it. He, he probably would just be like wishing she was being chased around the house because she's too fat and needs some exercise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just say it so nonchalantly. Something I had to become comfortable with is that most of my friends on YouTube are psychopaths. Hi. Like almost all of them. And when I went through the list of like, who are my closest friends? It's like, who's not a psychopath? <laughs> Like who has who has empathy and compassion? Like most most people don't. Like most of them are like laughing at children's get, children getting hurt. Now Colossal doesn't laugh. He protects the children because he. Yeah, I like kids. I like kids. Not in the same way that Pyro does, but. <laughs> 
you're a killer clown persona that is intimidating in all of your visuals. It's like, I'm coming to get you. I'm dangerous. You're, you got a touch of it. You, you were literally harassing that J station guy for so long. He did nothing wrong. Yeah, because he was such an innocent. Colossal's role in the community is kind of like a Dexter, where it's like he, he knows that he's crazy. He knows that he's dangerous. What the fuck is this? This isn't true. The community points Colossal, or Colossal points himself at someone who he can, without a conscience, knock off and humiliate and bully and embarrass because they deserve it. It's like Dexter. The more I think about this, I mean, this is the, this is like realizing that uh, Pyro should be a skunk. Realizing that Colossal should be part of like WEF, the World Economic Forum or the International you know, Monetary Fund or whatever, the IMF. Colossal's a perfect fit. He thinks you should basically own nothing and be happy. No, I don't. No PlayStation 5 shirts. <laughs> That's a bit fucking different. That's a bit fucking different. One is a thousand dollar shirt. I'm not saying don't have a fucking shirt. I'm saying don't have a thousand dollar PS5 shirt. Uh, we're having this no, argument. No, we're not. We're not doing don't, you, this. You don't understand. There is no, no we're not, argument. We're not doing this. You, need, you need to actually be put in a home. Anyways, argument's over. If one food source evaporates, like, I'm sure our caveman ancestors... Okay, I'm not sure about this one, but I'm going to go with it. I'm sure our caveman Neanderthal ancestors were eating, like, the dodo bird on a regular basis. Now, I can't tell whether the dodo bird went extinct before humans arrived. I'm not sure about this. But technically, they could have been eating the dodo bird. But the dodo bird went extinct, probably because they ate them all. And so they just found... Chickens? Or something? Well, it wasn't dinosaurs. I mean, you, you should know. Colossal <laughs> named the dodo. <laughs> you've heard of, like, the potato famine, right? When you've disrupted a staple crop, uh, you can't just adjust by planting something else instantly. Like, within a matter of months, people will starve en masse. The Irish are dumb as shit. They just couldn't, they didn't realize there was another food other than a fucking potato. It's like they've got potato and fucking liquor. And that's about it. I think it was 2010, Russia had a drought and they had some other problems with their wheat crop. And they had had a bad harvest and a drought and a lot of fires in Western Siberia where they grow a fair amount of their wheat. So they blocked exports for a couple of months. That drove global wheat prices up by a factor of two. Remember, food, especially base commodities like wheat, have inelastic demand. So it doesn't take much of a disruption in supply to make prices go bonkers. In their primary export markets, which are the Middle East, prices tripled. And that triggered the series of coups and revolts and wars that we now come to know as the Syrian Civil War and the Arab Spring. Oh, this is going to be so much worse. I just feel like people are dumb and they just don't, if they they just, just don't try if other foods. they just foods. said apples. If they just grew apples. It's just apples, fucking bananas. I just export, import something else. I don't know. They're not all going to go under just because apples are being consumed like Crash Bandicoot. I'm not a farmer. In fact, I know so little about this that I'm completely out of my depth. You're, but I, you're the one saying the most. <laughs> I, I will die on this fucking hill, quite frankly. I will die on this apple orchard okay a carrot can grow in 80 days so carrots i think you can tell people to grow carrots and that's not ridiculous i've got a really really good solution for you i don't want to hear it okay so there's there's a food shortage most people aren't going to get to eat enough famine almost cannibalism but what america has in abundance is fat people we starve the fat people just for a while and this balances it out all right, because that extra food is going to feed the normal people. The <laughs> normal. The normal people. Okay, what about that? This is like Voldemort talking about the muggles. I mean, Nikocado Avocado is still going to be doing mukbang with wheat. All right. I can see this video already. There is a genuine food crisis in America. Nikocado Avocado is going to title the video something like eating all the wheat in a wheat crisis. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, Rusty and I, we've been quietly accumulating a lot of pasta stores. And our joke is like, when pasta- Accumulating what? We could play the video right here. I'll show you Rusty showing his safe with pasta. And he goes, I knew I wasn't fucking crazy. And he shows me the spaghetti that he has in his closet. He sent me that as soon as I sent him a text that said, buy spaghetti. I fucking knew I wasn't crazy. Okay. 
I think I think this is almost as bad, if not worse, than the the whole toilet paper thing. You're hoarding packet noodles now. What are you going to do? Are you going to sell the noodles on? No. Are you going to sell no, them I on just for like 100% of the profit? I, I didn't get more pasta than we would need over a matter of months. I just don't want to like not have it later. Oh, God, we need more spaghetti. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? You're out of your mind. You just don't eat spaghetti for a while. I don't. What's the problem? Because then we can't film this meme. So like what I want to leak out is this fake footage of like Rusty and me and Nikki. We've got these bibs on and we've got sauce all over our face and we're like fatter than normal and we're slurping spaghetti up and laughing in slow motion. Like I want there to be like leaked spaghetti footage where it shows that like these YouTubers have all the spaghetti. I get these, I get these interesting, like, ideas and, like, urges sometimes. So, like, I was with Nerd, um, at an Airbnb somewhere. And, like, it was the first day we got there. And I was just lying in bed, a bit tired from the move. And I just, I just heard this calling. Wake up, wake up. I think Nerd and Nikki were, like, asleep as well because they were tired. And I just felt this calling from outside, from a tree. Come Just to climb this tree and see what, what was at the top. So I go outside, climb the tree, and like peer down what's at the top. And it's a little nest full of like disgusting worm creatures. The slugs. The slug creatures. And they were, I felt that they were calling to me. They wanted me to like feed them. Is this something that happened? I'm confused. This absolutely happened. Nerd can back me up. I zoned out for like one second. Were you on fentanyl or something when doing this? No, I literally wasn't. I wasn't on anything. Nerd could testify to this. The worms, the slug creatures were calling to me. And so I had the urge to, to go back inside, get a stick of butter and eat a bit and then dribble it from my mouth into like the slugs because they wanted to be fed like melted butter from my mouth like a, like a baby bird. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking psychopath. <laughs> the fuck is your problem? This is a real story. And then they grow just dependent on him because they're like little baby birds except they're slugs. And they, uh, they've been abandoned by their mother slug. Or let's say Colossal even killed their mother. So Colossal's melting butter in his mouth because it's the only thing, it's the only high calorie thing that he can get up there in his mouth. And he just dribbles a little bit out of, the, out of his mouth into the slug's mouth. They were trying to communicate to me via remote viewing. I think. <laughs> they did. Why are there slugs in our nest? They were snail babies, right? They hadn't grown their shell yet. And he'd walk out to go smoking and you'd just hear this crunch, 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 crunch. And that was colossal stepping on all of the snails and slugs. I'd feel bad for it. That's how you know I'm not a sociopath. I would feel bad when I stepped on the snails. I, d I just realized the synchronicity here. So Colossal hears slugs crying out for help in the darkness and goes to help them. Slug children. So how often are you hearing help that you... <laughs> that no wonder he you think... He would help slugs, but he wouldn't help another human being. <laughs> he would help slugs, but not his female... He drops his... everything he's doing to listen to the voices in his head, but when another country's <laughs> starving, he's like, eat apples. He'll crawl across a tree branch. <laughs> like a snake on its belly to drip butter into the mouth of a slug who's crying for help. Yeah, but I didn't actually do it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> like, I didn't actually do it. And I was, I remember being concerned that if it was salted butter, then they would die from the process because, you know. Right. Yeah, unsalted salt and Oh, no, no, it was you dribble salted on butter on butter. And they're screaming like, How can you do this to us, father? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I committed unknowingly snail genocide and their children were left orphans alone in a tree that they could not get out of. You have to imagine a snail or a slug. I think they were snail children. But the snail had to climb the tree, slither up the tree, pretty big tree, right? Even for me to climb. All the way to the top to lay its... I don't think snails lay eggs, but... So, so wait, wait, this wasn't a dream. 